Welcome back to my channel. Now, one of the things that I want to start doing uh, for the next three months, for the next couple of weeks, is I want to start posting every single week. But now, the content is going to change a little bit. You know, one of the things that I want to start doing is I just want to continue documenting, sharing lessons from building my company from $17,000 in profit from last year to $100,000 in profit uh, this year. All right. Now, if you're new here, hi, my name is Fama Hernandez, and I am on a mission of helping the undocumented community get more jobs on entrepreneurship. I do this through two ways. So today I run entrepreneurship programs for undocumented students. I have a, a boot camp that exposes them to building a company within five hours. And then I have an incubator that helps them build their company in just eight weeks. Now, what I have in front of me is my year one review of 2024. Now, right off the bat, you're probably wondering, like, what do you mean by year one? Ultimately, I read this book. It's called The 12 Week Year. And in that book, it just talks about um, instead of you focusing on having 12 months within a year, change those months into a week. So ultimately, I have four, we four years within 2024. All right, so I'm just going to pretty much read off of this and then just give you my, my thoughts, okay? But there's a few sections here that I think are going to be important so y'all can kind of learn uh, from what I'm doing, okay? So first things first, every single year or every three months, I have a goal. All right, now for this year, I was able to hit 47% of my goal for the year, uh, which is actually pretty neat in three months, okay? And I was measuring the number of contracts that I landed and also measuring uh, the potential revenue from the new contracts that I have. Uh, but I'm, I'm happy to say that I almost hit 50% of my goal, uh, which is actually pretty good. Now, in terms of impact, you know, my goal was to work with a total of 240 undocumented students through my programs. Um, and I was able to work with a total of 90 undocumented students this year. Uh, I ran two workshops and then I did one bootcamp program uh, in April and y'all saw the video on that. Now, moving into financial overview, um, the profit margin for my quarter was 73%. Uh, so if you're new to profit margins, all that really means that out of every dollar that I make, I keep 73 cents of it. Um, my goal is to continue keeping it this way, right? I I also realized that I'm able to increase my profit margin if I do programs virtually, hybrid, or even in person, but just charging more, which is also one of the things that um, are going to help me. And I'm looking into it, you know, in this upcoming year. Uh, but overall, the beauty about having a profit margin this large is that I am able to then reinvest this into having an assistant for the day of the boot camp, but also reinvest it to make it better, right? So uh, through my boot camp, Luckily, um, I didn't have to print any certificates, um, you know, because, you know, the center that ended up hiring me took care of that. But in the future, when they don't take care of that, you know, I could use that money to really print some nice certificates, make them look nice, have a little ceremony. So, you know, uh, that's in terms of profit margin, which is actually pretty good, uh, was profitable for this first year. Um, the other thing that I want to mention on the financial side is that I began to say no to opportunities that were not within my designated range of $3,000 to $6,000, right? And by opportunities, I mean, I wasn't gonna take any client that didn't pay me within that range, okay? You know, and I got this idea from the book, uh, 10X is easier than 2X, because ultimately it talks about that, um, it's not about doing more, it's, it's, it's about doing qualitative work and being known for one thing or one thing only, right? So for me right now, I want, to, I want my company prepare to be known for entrepreneurship programs, entrepreneurship boot camps, incubators, and I want to focus on making those good. Um, but in order to make them good, I need to be able to be profitable enough to reinvest and make it better and continuously improve. So uh, that's one of the things that I, I I decided to, you know, like I did get opportunities to go and speak for $100, $200, but I was like, nah, because, you know, if I do a $200 gig, yeah, I could have 10 clients so I can make 2000 but if I had to choose between doing 10 clients of $200 versus doing one client of 3000 or one client of 6000 I would rather do the $6,000 one or $3,000 one because I'll be able to reinvest uh, more time, more resources, and it would just be of higher quality. And again, I want to be known as that. Okay. Now moving towards uh, the marketing and the sales. Okay. In terms of marketing, I focused on one marketing channel. Just emails, you know, throughout my boot camps, uh, I always mention that the best way to start marketing anything is to let your network know about your programs and about your service. In my case, though, I had already done that uh, last year. So now what I ended up doing was I just started doing cold emails to potential clients um, and that ended up working. I also had a specific avatar 
So I had an organization, I created an avatar and I was like, they need to have these requirements. Um, and then I just started reaching out to them. Now, what ended up helping me land these contracts was providing bonus offers uh, for my programs, right? So for my bootcamp, I could provide certificates as, an, as a bonus. I could also provide access to my membership platform. So those, those were two of the things that I included in my proposals when I was working with these clients. Um, and that ended up working out really well. So like one of the things about my programs is that I do not charge students. I charge organizations. Those are the ones that end up paying me the contracts um, and it's provided for free for the students, which honestly, you know, makes it really accessible. Uh, in terms of code emails, I sent over 500 plus emails and I received 20 new leads. Uh, so they ended up working out. Um, and out of these leads, I was able to convert 35% of them, right? So um, yeah, you could do the math on that. Uh, and actually, you know, this is the structure of my email that ended up working, right? So on the subject line, I added a question right uh, and a question that has sparked curiosity for somebody to open it which is one of the most important things and i read it from this book called copywriting secrets everything that i wrote on this email um, so i do recommend you to check it out my body i put dear name comma next paragraph shocking statistic about the problem that they face and then a new paragraph new sentence added personal connection to this problem and then i wrote the good news is that i wrote down my experience Call to action to learn more and make up an appointment with me. And then I put best and then uh, name. And at the bottom at the postscript, I wrote, I did something um, that is more psychological that, that evokes uh, scarcity, right? So I put there's X amount of potential clients, but I can only work with X amount. Um, and that email ended up working out well, at least this time around. Okay, so that's a little bit on the marketing side of that. So that was pretty neat. All right, moving towards the program and delivery and the feedback. In terms of delivery uh, for, for both of the boot camps and for the boot camps and the workshops, uh, they were all in person, right? So I didn't have any virtual programs uh, this quarter, but I am going to start having more virtual ones uh, coming down in the future. Uh, one of the challenges that did come up when I was pitching these programs to potential clients was just not having documentation of previous programs and also not having any testimonials. Uh, so one of the things that I decided to do before I ran uh, my very first in-person boot camp at UC Irvine was um, I hired an assistant for this specific event and I told her that if she would be able to take photos, take some notes of the event, um, like that it would allow me to post that on social media, get some testimonials, and that ended up working out really well. Um, and here's an example of some of the feedback that some of these people posted. Now, in terms of feedback and testimonials, these are what students said throughout this first quarter. Hi everyone, my name is Catherine and I'm a fifth year here at UCI uh, and my major is psychology. So how do you think this program will influence your future career? Um, before this program, I had a lot of ideas. I just didn't know how to execute them. Um, but after this program, I have a clear structure on the steps that I could take to start my own business. Um, and now I feel a little bit more confident um, and know like the right resources or how to approach it. Is there something you enjoyed from this program the most? I think the slides, they were really visually like pleasing and um, it was just so easy to understand and also the language, it was everyday language, uh, so it was easy to process and I was able to apply like my own scenarios and like my own ideas for my business and it just provided again like a clear structure on how to go about that. <laughs> Were the concepts throughout the presentation explained good? Yes, yeah, uh, like I said before they were really easy to understand, uh, it was everyday language so it was really easy to process um, and there was a lot of uh, examples from like personal experiences and it just provided like that reassurance that these examples work and it's proven. Okay, what is one thing that you could improve um, in the future for this program? Um, if there's anything. Yeah, I, I think um, I think it was perfect. Uh, like I said, I really enjoyed the visuals um, and also the language was really good. Maybe I would add uh, like an example, like another example from a different business okay. um, or just like a broader like spectrum of different businesses. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, hey everybody, I'm Juan. I'm a second year computer science major. Okay, so how do you think this program will influence your future career? Uh, I feel like this program actually really helped me uh, ever since I graduated from high school and came uh, into UC Irvine. Um, as a college student, I, I've always wanted to kind of start my own business, uh, 
uh, either through the example that Juan shared of, of like photography, I'm actually aligned to photography, so it's like, oh, how can I um, take his example and execute it uh, and start making money um, on the side while being a student here as well. Uh, and even eventually, um, later in the future, I want to start my own tech company. So how can I work with uh, people? So I think uh, I was working with like uh, a group of people that I hadn't originally talked to. So this just kind of uh, helped me grow in terms of like commu uh, communication-wise. And then other uh, aspects as well, like uh, budgeting, like um, what steps are taken like behind the business, not like logistic-wise, and everything else that goes behind it as well. So I think that's something that kind of helped me reassure uh, what I want to do in the future as well, so yeah. Okay, perfect. Is there something that you enjoyed from this program the most? Uh, yeah, so I think uh, the whole sense of uh, like the group uh, aspect of it, I know that's a huge thing in businesses. It takes, uh, it's not just one person, it's a whole uh, corporation, like you know, it, um, it takes uh, a team to kind of uh, make it work. So uh, we were like jotting down um, notes, we were brainstorming, like uh, I was jumping from one idea to another, I'm like, oh, I didn't really think about it uh, this way. How can I incorporate like this perspective into my own idea, uh, or just overall in life? You know, how how can I uh, look at um, things in a broader perspective, not just uh, in that sense of way, uh, and also the um, the feedback that I got um, as well. And uh, I guess the slides were also uh, as a visual learner, they kind of helps you know um, seeing it and then also being able to execute it myself. So I think that was a great way, and also how uh, Juan was explaining the concepts. Um, I was able to like uh, go through it in a way where I understood it as well. Okay. Were the concepts throughout the presentation explained good? Uh, yeah, very good. So I think uh, I'm actually like thinking in the back of my head, how can I um, like use a uh, planner and not just uh, this business aspect, but uh, as well as other courses and stuff. So I think he explained it very well. If anything, um, I think he even was walking around you know, asking if we had any questions, and I asked him a couple questions, and he clarified the, um, the my questions like even more than what I had intentionally like uh, wanted to know. So he explained it very well. Okay. What is one thing that could be improved in the future in this program? Um, I feel like overall everything kind of worked well. It was all, a little bit more on myself, kind of uh, the time-wise, because um, I like to like map everything out very good. So I think there's all, uh, a little bit more on myself, but overall the course was great. He helped me kind of uh, like any doubts I had uh, in like photography. So like if you guys uh, ever need any pictures, let me know. I might start my business <laughs> soon. So uh, yeah, hit, hit my line, let me know. <laughs> and then I also had ideas uh, on how I could improve future bootcamp. Right? So some ideas that I had was to continue documenting this, or to have an assistant that would come to every single bootcamp. Um, also, maybe implementing a marketing strategy for people to maybe having like a photo booth with a hashtag of the bootcamp so people can also help me, get, so people can also post content on social media and then I can repost it, right, that would add credibility there. Uh, and also, you know, throughout the bootcamp, I was asking certain groups to participate and some uh, didn't want to participate. So I thought of, and actually the, my assistant, Cecilia, shout out to Cecilia. Uh, she came up with an idea of providing incentives for people to, for people to participate throughout these boot camps, right? Um, so some incentives could be stickers, uh, just smaller prizes. Um, so that was actually something really, really cool. All right. Now finishing off this video, I do want to talk a little bit about my goals for next quarter, at least some of the goals that I have for next quarter. So like I mentioned, I ended up sending over 500 emails, um, you know, in, in, in year one, uh, January, February, March. Now in year two or Q2, I want to 10x the number of emails that I send. Uh, so like that, I will be, if I, so like that, by doing the math and keeping the conversion rate or my sales conversion to 34%, I should be able to land way more contracts than I did um, in this first year. But in order to do that, I need to hire a part-time assistant to help me gain some time back, right? So one of the things that took me a long time within this uh, first quarter was just finding emails of potential clients. And that's the 80% that I actually need to let go of to focus on the 20% that matters, right? Like proposals, meeting with clients, uh, sending invoices, doing the work. Um, so I am gonna hire an assistant uh, for that for year two. Second thing is testimonials seem to work, right? So I actually posted 
my UCI experience. I posted it on LinkedIn. I posted it on social media. I mean, I posted it on LinkedIn, Instagram, uh, my email newsletter, and then I posted it on YouTube. And somebody actually reached out to me showing their interest in, in my program. So um, my goal is to continue documenting this and actually get 10 video testimonials of students from my boot camps and programs um, so that can help me get more contracts with other uh, universities or community colleges. All right, third thing is that um, you you all can see my... So one of the things that I, I found from the book, the 12-week year, is that every single week you want to have a scorecard. Um, and, and as you all can see here, um, my average was like 20 to 40% of the tests that I completed on, a, you know, throughout these past 12 weeks. And that can happen, right? If I want to get to where I want to get to by the end of the year, I need to continue. Uh, I need to complete more of my tasks throughout the week, right? So my goal this next year too is to maintain 70% of tasks completed um, so I am able to get more contracts and I'm able to, you know, one of the things that I also realize is like the more you put in, the more you're going to get out of it, right? So if I am able to 10x the amount of emails I send, I'm able to post more content, I'm able to reach out to more people, I should be getting closer to my goal. Uh, the fourth thing is I, I um, there's a list of tasks that I wrote down, right, that I do. So like, for example, like I send proposals, I meet with clients, I have to print out certain things, I need to create flyers. So I wrote down a list of 20 to 30 tasks that I did this Q1. Um, and a few of those things I can actually automate with AI, right? So for example, and a few of those things, I can either hire somebody to do, help me do them or automate them with AI, right? So, for example, finding emails, I can't really do that with AI because my emails are very specific and certain websites have some, uh, some, you know, and certain websites don't allow me to sort of scrape information. So that one, I, I hired an assistant part-time to help me find those emails so I can just focus on sending them. But there's other tasks like proposals, um, and responding to emails or following up with emails that I can uh, that I actually created a chat GPT AI assistant to help me uh, automate those tasks. So I'm really excited for that. And, and ultimately, like I want to continue doing this every single quarter where I list the list. Of, I list all the tests that I did and then figure out who can I put as an assistant there or what can I automate with AI. So that's the next goal. Um, and then the last thing that I will speak about publicly is that. Um, I want to continue improving the quality of the programs by 1% every single quarter, right? So whether I get a boot camp or whether I do more incubators, what would make it 1% better, right, so than the last one, right? And I feel like if I can continue just doing 1%, 1%, 1%, if I do 40, I would be 40% better by the end of the year than when I started, right? So those are just some of the things. And by 1%, I mean hire more people or make it better, make their certificates look better or document it in a better way, uh, providing in different and different styles, you know, stuff like that. So I'm really excited for that. But yeah, like overall too, what I do want to say is that one of the challenges that I had throughout this first year, the, throughout these first three weeks is that I wasn't working, you know, seven days a week uh, because I actually did have like two part-time gig opportunities um, where I was helping somebody edit videos and I was helping a relative uh, with their business, with their marketing. And I feel like that was a mistake that I made because it took away like 20 hours throughout my week to focusing on somebody else's and not really focus on my business, right? And I think my results sort of reflect that, right? So now I feel like uh, there's a little bit more pressure because now I have an assistant that I pay part-time to help me do certain tasks. But with that added pressure, I need to be working harder, right? So my goal is to send 500 emails a week uh, and my assistant is going to help me gather all those emails so I can just send them, right? And I can't slack off no more, at least this second quarter, because if I do slack off and I don't get more contracts, I, um, that $2,000 investment is not going to return me, you know, 10 times more, right? So what I'm looking at is if I invest $2,000 right now, can these two thousand dollars turn into five thousand, ten thousand, twenty thousand, thirty thousand, forty thousand, fifty thousand within the next three uh, months? Um, so yeah, I'm really excited for that. But it just means that now I'm not going to be doing editing for this person. I'm not going to be helping a relative. I'm going to fully focus on this um, and just focusing on making these entrepreneurship programs the best that they can 
and figuring out who are the key partners, figuring out how am I gonna get feedback. Um, but yeah, y'all, I really, yeah, I'm really excited. Um, I hope y'all found this extremely, extremely helpful. But yeah, y'all, that ultimately completes my year one review of Prepare LLC. Um, and again, by year one, I mean January to March. Um, I'm gonna be doing another one from April, May, and June. I'm gonna do another one of that. See how much revenue I increase, see how the profit margin changes, see how it's like having an assistant. Um, but I'm very, very excited for this next chapter. I'm really excited uh, because I feel like if I am just able to focus seven days a week um, and really implement AI tools and continue to think about ways to improve the programs, not only will I be able to help out a lot of these students, but I will also become that number one source of undocumented entrepreneurship, which is, which is my goal, right? Um, so yeah, hope y'all found this helpful. And if you did, you go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. And if you're listening on Spotify, give this a review and share this with, with an undocumented aspiring entrepreneur. Thank you so much and be motivated. Stay motivated, baby.